All right, I'm back. I just ate a nectarine. I got myself a massive glass of water. This is a beer mug, but I don't like beer. I, I actually, I like beer, but I don't like alcohol. I don't like alcohol. And uh, I'm, I also thought I should share with you is I'm just wearing my t-shirt. And um, I'm just kind of conflicted about that. Because in the classroom, I like to try to dress sharp and wear a shirt and a tie. Um, because I think it's important for you to know that that makes a huge difference in your career, that you really need to present yourself professionally. And I'm not exemplifying that right now, so uh, that's why I'm speaking to it. And partly that's just because there's a lot going on in my life. <laughs> and so trying to figure out how to get my shirts dry cleaned and all that with quarantine and COVID, these are sort of uh, unusual times, so I'm just wearing a t-shirt. And, uh, and now what we're going to talk about is uh, these things here, takeaways. And so we're going to learn about circuits and switches. We're going to learn why you always see zeros and ones when you see stuff with computers. Like if, you know, you know, if we did like technology and Google that and then just look at images, um, right? Like you're going to pretty quickly, like here we go, like this image, this one, is all a bunch of zeros and ones. You see all those zeros and ones? Like, why do we have zeros and ones associated with computers? So you're going you're gonna to learn why that's the case and um, how that's related to circuits and switches and coding schemes and binary digits and 2 to the power of n and, and all that other stuff, bytes, bits, 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 bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, machine language. We're going to learn all that. Um, and so the first thing you need to know about how computers work Right? We've, we've learned the basics, and those basics were computers exist to take data and turn it into information. And uh, the four basic functions of a computer are what? What are they? Say it. Okay, just pause this video and say it. What are the four basic functions of a computer? It's IPOS, input processing output storage. And then we looked at the ontological structure. We looked at the ontology of computers, of information systems, and computers are broken down into hardware and software. And then hardware is broken down into input processing, output, and storage, right? And so we could say this keyboard's an input device. These speakers are an output device. This flash drive is a storage device, right? So we're categorizing stuff because that's what academics and humans like to do. And then software could be broken down into system software and application software. And system software could be broken down into operating systems, utilities, drivers. Utilities would be like backup software, antivirus software. So that's everything that we've kind of learned so far. But now we're going to see how computers work. And the most fundamental thing about how computers work is that they run on electricity. And this is important to know because electricity has two discrete states. Those discrete states are on and off. And so just with like a light bulb on your porch, you could store and you could convey, right? So storage, input, output, conveying, you could do input, output, and storage with just a light bulb, right? And you already do this, and you already understand how this works. And the analogy to drive this all home is Halloween. So on Halloween, <laughs> on Halloween, the porch light, if it's on, right, electricity, if the electricity's on, that means one thing. And if it's off, that means something else. So using electricity, we're able to store and convey input, store, output. We're able to store and convey two pieces of information with one light bulb, one circuit, one switch. It's a switch, right? You flick the switch on and off. The porch light goes on and off. You could also call that a circuit. You could also just call that a light bulb. And so this is an example to illustrate how computers work. And uh, computers run on electricity. And when that electricity is in an on or an off state, that could represent something. And the porch light on Halloween is an example of that. It's an example of using electricity in an on-off state to represent whether or not you could come trick-or-treating at a house. If it's on, come trick-or-treat. If it's off, go away. Got it? If you don't get it, rewind the video, watch this again. <laughs> okay? And, and that all leads to something called a coding scheme. Okay? And so the coding scheme at Halloween is light on, come trick or treat, light off, go away. You could create any kind of a coding scheme. And so if I had one, one light, as we've seen, I could store and convey one of two different messages. 
right? I could have it be come trick or treat, come in, or go away. If the light's on, come in, go away. If I have two lights, here's a question for you. How many messages could I convey to somebody with two, two porch lights, right? Two circuits, two switches, and some combo of on or off. And so the answer is four. Both lights could be on, both could be off, one could be on, the other could be off, and vice versa. So four combinations of on or off with two lights. And, uh, and that would allow me to create some new coding scheme. So if my friends were looking at my porch lights, because I have two, uh, they'd be able to see, you know, both lights are off, go away. Oh, that off on state, that off on state means come in. That on off state, the other one means bring pizza. The on on means bring beer, but you're gonna drink it because I don't like it. I, I don't like the alcohol on you. If I had three lights, how many messages could I convey to my friends if I had three porch lights and various combinations of on or off, right? And so this starts to become sort of a mathematical problem. And the solution for that mathematical problem is two to the power of n, which is somewhere down here. So if I have one light, it's two to the power of one. If I have two lights, it's two to the power of two. I could represent and convey four things, right? We saw that with two porch lights. If I have three, it's two to the power of three. Two times two times two, two, four, eight, right? I could represent eight things. Two to the power of four, two to the power of five, two to the power of six, two to the power of seven. Two to the, if I had eight porch lights, it would be two to the power of eight. And these start to sound like computer numbers. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Right? Those are computer numbers. <laughs> you know, you see things when you shop for computers in increments of the power of two, two to the power, two to some power. And the reason it's two to some power is because two, right, on or off, and then how many of them, and that's the N, is how many of them? One, two, three porch lights, then it's two to the power of three, right? So that's why it's two to the power of N. And, uh, and we could create all kinds of coding schemes. So with three lights, we could store eight. But in addition to, you know, just instead of writing off and on all the time, I'm tired of that, I'm just gonna write zero and one. And zero stands for off and one stands for on. And so I could just represent off and on like that instead of like this, right? And so that's just easier. And that's why you see all these zeros and ones with computers, because zero stands for off and one stands for on. And so I could say, well, there's my coding scheme. Or alternatively, I could have my coding scheme be connected to letters of the alphabet. Randomly, arbitrarily, the people who invented computers just created whatever coding schemes they liked. This series of little switches and on-off states, and there's really small little circuits, little switches inside computers, which could be checked. This series of on and off represents this. It's really that dumb. It just happens at a vast scale. <laughs> and really infinitesimally small, which is amazing. It's just like your porch light though. This is the entire concept, right? It's electricity in some on-off or state, electricity in some on-off state representing some coding scheme. And so that's the way that works. And so if I had this coding scheme, what would what would that those zeros and ones over on the right, what would those represent? Okay, so you could pause the video and you could work that out. It might be kind of fun for you. All right, I'm gonna take it that you pause the video and work that out. Here's the solution. So zero, zero, 001 is B, zero, zero, 000 is A, 100 zero, zero is D, zero, 010 zero is C, zero, zero, 000, you know, that's all I could come up with, with eight, bad cab. All right, maybe you could have come up with something else, but that's what I came up with. So that's how computers work. That's the next thing you need to know about how computers work. And interestingly, I don't know if I have this slide in here. Interestingly, look at that power symbol, right? So the power symbol, which stands for turning something on or off, is made up of a zero, which represents off, and a one, which represents on. So the zero and the one, which in computers represent off and on, is what the power symbol is made up of. It's made up of a zero and one because the power symbol turns things on or off. That is just like really good graphic design, right? That that's what the power symbol represents. It represents the zeros and ones the ons and offs, which is behind all of this computing stuff. So it's kind of phenomenal when you think about it because every video you watch on YouTube, every, including this one, every, every sound you hear, every song that comes out of some computing device, off of some CD, if it's all digital, digital digits, digits zero and one, if it's all digital, it's all made up of little circuits in some on-off state. And so for sound, what this might look like 
is, you know, with CD quality sound, there's 48 kilohertz. That's 48,000 samples of sound every second. So the computer takes 48,000 of samples of the sound every second. And then it, you know, says if it's this pitch, ooh, right? It, it's this series of zeros and ones. If it's this pitch, ee, it's this series of zeros and ones. And it does that 48,000 times every second. It represents each of those sounds as some series of zeros and ones. And then it looks at those zeros and ones and says, okay, those are the sounds that need to come out. And it makes those sounds mind blowingly. And that's how you get like, I don't know, music coming out of your computer. Same with images, same with pictures. It's all zeros and ones representing colors and frames per second if it's video. Um, and so everything in computers is zeros and ones, totally mind blowing. And so that brings us to like, you know, bits and bytes. And so we talked about digits, right? And so the zero and the one binary digits and the abbreviation of binary digits is bits. So a binary digit by like by plane to bicycle to, uh, I don't know, by, right? By stands for two. Uh, binary digits is two digits, zero and one. And so we, we represent those binary digits, we could abbreviate binary digits as bits. So a single bit is just a zero or a one. Eight bits is called a byte because original computers dealt with eight bits at a time. What order of on or off are those eight bits in? A uh, thousand bytes is a kilobyte, a thousand kilobytes is a megabyte, a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte, a thousand gigabytes is a terabyte. So what's that? You talking to me? Yeah, she's talking to someone else. You talking to me? <laughs> so that's how we represent the binary digits. We actually measure how many zeros and ones make up some file. So if we look up like average size of MP3 song, right? I don't know, MP3 file. How big is a four minute song on MP3? It, uh, ASCII characters, one byte, or eight bits, 35 bytes, 3.5 megabytes, right? So if we have 3.5 mega, megabytes, then that's gonna be 3,500 kilobytes, or 3.5 million bytes, or eight times 3.5 million, which is gonna be like 24, four, like 28 million bits, 28 million zeros and ones, 28 million, I'm just ballparking this, I'm not sure if I did that math right, 28 million zeros and ones to represent a single song. Like little circuits in some state of on or off. 28 million. So that one little song could be like that's mind blowing. That humans have figured out how to do that. So that's how we, we measure bits. And uh, let's see, <laughs> see what else there is to know about this. So storing those on off states, this is sometimes broken into generations of computers. Uh, originally those on-off states were stored in vacuum tubes like in the 50s, the 40s and the 50s. And then the vacuum tubes were about the size of a light bulb and then they started to be stored in transistors. That was a second generation of computer. So transistors could store an on-off state and they ran cool, which is better. And then integrated circuits came about and that was the third generation of computers and those were known as chips. And then the fourth generation of computers in the early 70s, 1971, were known as microprocessors. And fifth generation is machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, and, uh, and then you could see how many zeros and ones could be stored. Uh, transistor, right? So we saw transistors are the on, another way we could refer to circuits or switches, right? Transistor, it's the on off, the thing that stores the on off state. So CPUs had how many transistors on them? In 1971, uh, CPU had 4,004 transistors. Like not long after that, 8,008. And, oh, sorry, 2,300. These are the number of transistors. These are the models. And then, you know, uh, most recently, 2 billion in like 2008. This is an old picture. And uh, let's look at the most current one, transistor count, wiki. And so transistor count, Wikipedia. Um, so CPUs now, wow, look at that. Uh, this is like 2018, 50, so that's 50 billion. 50 billion, 50 billion transistors, 50 billion little on-off switches, which can be set in an on-off state, and it can be instantly checked inside a CPU, and the CPU is about as big as your thumbnail. 
smaller actually than that and about as thick. And there's 50 billion little on off switches that could be set and checked inside that CPU. It's mind blowing, mind blowing. And uh, I'm just looking here, MOS designer, MOS processors area, date of introduction. Here's the sort, sort by date, 2019. Yeah, 50 billion was the one we were at before. This is million, that's 10 billion, 39, 39 billion. I don't know where the 50 billion one was, but ooh, was that a 250 billion? No, it's 250 million. So anyhow, that's transistor counts. 50 billion, man, it's crazy. So there's this guy, Gordon Moore, who worked at Intel. Intel stands for Integrated Electronics, not Intelligence, though that's a nice association for that company. Uh, and Gordon Moore is one of the founders of Intel. And he said, you know what? We could double processors every 18, the processing power of computers, how many transistors on our, on our chip every 18 to 20 months. And that's held true since the 60s, though it's backed off some. So no matter what we refer to it as, circuits, switches, transistors, gates, we're, all we're talking about is some switch in some on-off state, which can be checked. And you should read through that slide, so I'll pause this video and read through it. I'm not gonna read through it. And, um, and we learned about that, and we learned about that, and those are kind of good to go through. So you could pause the video now. You could pause the video now. You could pause the video now. All right. And, uh, and then also on, off, one, zero, binary digits, bits, and machine language, the language of computers, is all referring to like those zeros and ones, those on off states. Those are all synonymous terms. Um, and so pause the video and read through this one, because that's a good one to read through. And then there's the power symbol again, and machine language, you can read through that. And then we already talked about input processing, output, and storage. And, uh, and then some of the areas where computers store stuff, and I'll draw you a diagram for this probably next week because we're talking about a lot, right? There's that little thing. Um, so we'll learn about cache and registers and RAM and memory and read-only memory and startup memory, BIOS. And uh, there's the motherboard where kind of like it's the thing that connects everything together. And like right here is where your CPU would plug in. And here's where your RAM would plug in, this purple thing. And here's where old hard drives would plug in. And here's where new hard drives, solid-state drives plug in. And here's a little battery to run your CMOS, your BIOS, and uh, here are expansion slots where you could stick in expansion cards, which allow you to expand the capabilities of your computer. And here's an AGB slot to put in a graphics card, accelerated graphics port. So like, you know, this is a motherboard. It's kind of like the mother and a family holds everything together. And the motherboard and computer kind of holds everything together, connects everything together. Here's a little diagram. You can pause the video, and this is an old one. It has like a floppy drive, which I no longer use. But that kind of talks about it. The buses on the computer are how uh, the little light wires from place to place on the motherboard, how things get around. If you flip the motherboard over on the other side, you would see them. And, um, you know, we talked about expansion slots and cards. And then bandwidth is how much data you could send over a, from one place to another, how quickly, it's also known as throughput. So broadband is a reflection of you know, broad band, bandwidth, broad bandwidth, how much data you could send over, like a lot, it's broad, right? That's what broadband means. Bandwidth and throughput is how much data from one point to another. Ports and connectors, so ports are where you plug things in, and then connectors are like the cables that you plug them in. And so that's you know, really kind of the meat of getting going with understanding computers. That's a pretty big chunk, just getting that piece where computers are like your porch light on Halloween. Computers run on electricity. There are coding schemes. If it's on, it means one thing. If it's off, it means something else. Multiply that by bazillions, right? 50 billion, latest transistor count for uh, CPUs. So describe the four main functions of computer system. The four main functions are IPOS, input processing, output storage, define bits, bytes, describe how they're measured, used, and processed. We took a look at that. And this is the common types of computers. We didn't do that, uh, you know, but there's cell phones, there's desktops, there's laptops, there's iPads. They're all the same thing. Servers, you know, supercomputers, like, um, you know, uh, what, what are, what's between super and mainframes, right? 
Like these are all just computers with different amounts of memory or processing power. They're all doing the same thing. They're all working with zeros and ones. Where we start to see a difference in how computers compute is when you jump into quantum computing, whole other ball game. Um, but everything else is just like, you know, how big, how small, how much processing power, how much storage, but they're all the same, you know, and the only difference is like, what's the form factor? You know, how do we use it? So um, that's list types of computers and discuss their main features. Identify the main types of keyboards and touch screens. <laughs> Describe the main types of mice and pointing devices. Explain how images, sounds, and sensor and data are input into computing devices. Uh, oops, I just created a new slide. Let me control Z on that to undo it. Uh, describe options for outputting images and audio, screen, speakers, printers, various types of printers, functions of the motherboard RAM, main functions of the CPU. Uh, describe various means of storing data information, describe common type supports, power consumption, ergonomics. So input process, output storage, we already saw that. You can pause this video and take a look at that if you want. Um, we learned about bits, right? Binary digits. And we also learned about bytes. And we also learned about kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte. We didn't learn about terabyte and petabyte, but it just keeps going up uh, by 1024. Zero's off, one is on. You could see that there in that little picture. Um, you know, there's different types of computers, cell phones, tablets, laptops, stationary computers, desktops, mainframes, supercomputers. Uh, they become different when you get into quantum computing. Uh, input devices, um, keyboard, touchscreen, stylus, virtually, you know, so like the ontology of computers, right? Computers are broken down into hardware and software. Hardware is broken down into input processing, output storage, all right? So now we're looking at input hardware devices, keyboard, touchscreen, stylus, virtual keyboard. Um, you know, mouse, touchpad, game controllers are all types of input devices. Uh, popular images, uh, input devices also include cameras, you know, flatbed scanners, webcams, microphones, sensors, uh, temperature sensors, like, you know, motion sensors, whatever. Um, output devices, uh, text, picture, sounds, video, monitor, printer, speakers, headphones. How do we get stuff out of the computer? Display screens, you know, LEDs, LCDs, whatever, right? Like, what, what does Costco have? How much does it cost? <laughs> you know, how they work, uh, we'll get into that later. P pixels, aspect ratio, and resolution. Um, and then speakers, headphones, and then more output devices, inkjet printer and laser printers and the, you know, features of each of those. Um, and then, you know, all-in-one printers and they printer scanner, copy your own fax. And it's again, like, what does Costco have, you know? <laughs> Buy your stuff at Costco, by the way, because Costco's got amazing returns. And then the motherboard, and we'll look at these, at the CPU, you know, we'll see, like, we're not going to learn how CPU works. But we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about the parts on the motherboard. We'll talk about ROM, RAM, cache, storage, uh, CPU, buses, expansion cards, you know. And uh, the central processing unit, you should know it's the brains of the computer. It's where the processing occurs. Controls all the functions of the computer's components. Processes all commands and instructions. And it's measured in gigahertz, which is billions of tasks a second. So if you look for a new computer, so let's just do that. Costco. And I'm going to shop all departments here, computers, and just go to desktops and PC desktop. And so, you know, um, I don't know. See, I'm just looking to, see, well, we'll go with sort by price, high to low. And we'll go with this. No, I don't like HP. Oh, Dell's not. So uh, six gigabyte video card, Intel Core, 2.9 gigahertz, right? So it could do 2.9 billion things a second, okay? So it goes through 2.9 billion executions a second. And uh, uh, the machine cycle is fetch, execute, decode, store, I think. And, uh, and so, right, it could do 2.9, that 2.9, billion times a second. <laughs> that's what 2.9 gigahertz means. Um, uh, so that's, that's that. And, uh, and then, you know, processor speed is measured in hertz, gigahertz. And then some computers have more cores. And so this computer is two terabyte, oh wait, uh, Intel, 7, Intel Core i7 processor, 10th gen. Uh, so if we search that and we do cores, 
just looking to see, you know, you could buy that just on its own for 330 bucks. Uh, processor, eight cores, right? I guess maybe it has, yeah, it has eight cores. So it's got eight CPUs working at the same time to get it done. So here's a dual core where it's like one physical little device, but there's actually two CPUs in that physical device, dual core CPU. And so, you know, with a single core, your pro if you have two programs running, that one processor switching between doing the processing for each program. But with a dual core, if you have two programs running, program one and program two, then this one is, the one core could do the processing for one of the programs, another core could do the processing for the other program. Like right now I have my web browser running, right? And I also have this video recording running. And so my processors in this system of mine are having to deal with uh, that stuff. And so if I have multiple cores, uh, an entire core could be dedicated to doing the video processing. So more cores, more data. Uh, you have storage, like a hard disk drive. You have solid state drive. We'll learn more about those. Flash storage, which is again another form of uh, solid state memory. And cloud storage, you can store things in the cloud. And then you have uh, cables, right? So you can connect stuff. USB cables, super pop popular. HDMI, uh, digital video input, DVI, I think is the one. Right, just different cables, um, you know, for getting stuff from one device to another device. And then power management, power supply, sleep mode, warm, cold, hibernate. Ergonomics, take care of yourself. And, uh, and then, you know, assistive technologies, you know, like voice recognition or whatever. I don't know, not everybody knows this, so this is kind of cool to check out. But you could click this little microphone right here, and then you could just say something and it searches for that. So that's a little bit, uh, there's like 46 minutes today we talked about computers, but it's good stuff. This is week two. Do your work, people. Keep showing up. Do your work. You're learning some amazing stuff. You're going to know more about computers by the end of this class than, I don't know, than pandas. Certainly than pandas. <laughs> then a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand the power symbol of representing zero and one. They don't understand why all the zeros and ones on computers. They run on electricity. It's all about on off. It's like your porch light on Halloween. It's about coding schemes. Is the circuit switch in an on state or an off state? Uh, off is zero. On is one. <laughs> Like, you got it. You got it now. You got it. And that's super cool, right? You got power. You know stuff. And you know it in a way that most people don't. I want you, for you, to be able to explain that to anybody. Just like straight out, you know, just spit it out. If somebody has asked, asked you how computers work, you now know how they work. If you didn't get this, if it went too fast for you, start over, watch it again. Okay? Learn this material. It'll serve you well in life. <laughs> See you next week.